saving me, saving us Amen. for this moment right here because we've all gone through a battle sometime in our life. Amen. If you haven't gone through one, we're probably in one right about all now. Right. And then we praise God, we believe in God to bring us out of that battle. Amen. 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 Right. Amen. So I want to thank Pastor Rico for um, this opportunity. Amen. I told him some time ago that I'm going to take some of the weight off of him. And I want to stand on my word. And I'm believing that God is going to use each and every one of us Amen. to do the same Amen. thing. Amen. To take the weight off. Amen. We don't bear each other's burdens in Forward Life Church. Amen. 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 Let's go in prayer. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for another Sunday morning. Thank you, Lord, for sustaining us, for propping us up, Lord. For lifting our heads, God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we are able to meet another Sunday, Lord, for some that didn't make it, Lord. We ask that you would wrap your arms around that family, those family, Father God, especially those in your valley, Texas, Lord, those innocent lives, Father, those in Buffalo, New York as well, God, that you would lift them up, Father God, and we know and we believe that that thing that we perceive as bad, you're going to turn it around for some good, and you're going to bring some good out of it, and we're going to believe that we stand in that, Lord. Father, we ask that the Holy Spirit would have its way in this place today, Lord. That you would give me the words, Father God, and that this computer does not go out on me, Lord. And thank you, Lord. We thank you for this time. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, I'm going to sit down for a little bit here. Because I love stories. I love the beginning. I love the middle, and I love the end. Amen. We started this series out with... Um, the contenders, Amen. or pretenders, having the fight left in you, what you have left in you. Amen. Then our second part of that was a collect call from a dullard. Collect call from a dullard. Yeah. Then last week we did the did I stutter part of it. Amen. If you got your Bibles, I'd like you to turn to Psalm 3 here and read it with me. I'm reading for the NIV, but later on I'm going to go back to the King James Version of it. You got it? Stand with me if you will, please. And you got it? Say, got it. Got it? Got it. Got it. It says, a psalm of David when he fled from his son Absalom. Oh, Lord, how many are my foes? How many rise up against me? Many are saying of me, God will not deliver me. But you are a shield around me. Oh Lord, you bestow glory on me and lift up my head. <laughs> to the Lord I cry aloud, and he answered me from his holy hill. Yes, Lord. I lie down and sleep. I awake because the Lord sustains me. I will not fear the tens of thousands drawn up on me against me on every side. Arise, O oh Lord, deliver me, O oh my God. Strike all my enemies on the jaw and break the teeth of the wicked. From the Lord comes deliverance. And may your blessings be on your people. Now I want you to hold that just for a minute. You can sit down now. You can sit down now. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. I've been excited all week, y'all. All week. All week. Now, with this, we thank Pastor Rico for his teaching. Because we learned this about two little years ago, a little over two years ago of lamenting and what that means. Amen. After reading this, <clears throat> there's a song by a favorite group that I like called the uh, Williams Brothers. They're from Smithdale, Mississippi. There's about five or six of them. Anyway, the latest one died just recently. It's the Leonard Leon uh, Williams. It's a favorite song that I liked some time ago called Cooling Waters. But I go on, I began to like another song that they wrote. I'm not gonna sing this thing because um, my singing just, you know, we ain't gonna do that. But if, and uh, <laughs> Sister Minister uh, Reed and, 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 and Sister Holland, um, Lola, if they keep pushing me, I'm gonna grab this mic. Because they sung one of my favorite songs this morning, and that's every praise. That's my go to song. But I'm gonna read this few lyrics from this song, and it says, <clears throat> Heartaches. I've had my shares of heartaches, but I'm still here. Amen, amen. Troubles. I've had my shares of troubles, but I'm still here. All right, thank you, Lord. Bruises. 
I've taken my lumps of bruises, but I'm still here. Thank you, Lord. Loneliness. I've had my shares of loneliness, but I'm still here. I'm still here. So this morning, I want to title this one, I'm Still Here. I'm Still Here. I'm Still Here. Tell somebody, I'm Still Here. I'm Still Here. Now, when we look at the underlining of this song, we ask ourselves, so what kind of song is this? This is one of lament mm. and a complaint. Amen. What does the lament mean? It's an expression, mm. a passionate expression Amen. for sorrow, for the loss of someone. But the complaint, it's not one of griping. It's not one of whining. Amen. It's what David is trying to do. He's trying to reach a resolution mm. to the problem of the crisis that he's in, Amen. facing in this song right here. Amen. Right? <clears throat> so... <clears throat> Let's look at some parts of this song. So be with me now. Let's look at the underlying situation here. <clears throat> it says that most songs are a reaction to a stimulus. What is the stimulus? It's the thing that causes activity or energy to move or to stir up in somebody Amen. in that one thing, right? Yeah. So we ask, what is causing David to write this song? Amen. What is David going through mm. that causes him to write this song? Yes. Mm. Well, I'm going to try to speed this thing up a little bit because I've changed so many notes over the past week. And even this morning, I changed some stuff. So I got rid of some stuff. But there's a few things I've put in there. So we're going to try to go with this thing. We're going to flow a little fast. So stick with me. Amen. We said that the song that <clears throat> David wrote Thanks. at the beginning, what does it say? Mm. It says, uh, Psalm of David, when he fled from his son Absalom. Mm. When he fled from his son Absalom. Oh, Lord. We know that David was anointed three times. Mm. Okay, first time he was anointed over his brothers yeah. in his hometown. Then the second time he was anointed over the tribe that he was from, the tribe of Judah. Right. He said the tribe of Judah is what? The praising tribe. Right. And then the second time, uh, the third time, he was anointed as king over all of Israel. All right. All of Israel. Right. Wow. Now, again, if you hadn't been in a battle, you had come out of one, or you just coming out of one, knowing that every time God sets you aside for something, mm -hmm. you better get ready. All because right. something's all getting right. ready to come your way. Yeah. Something's yeah. coming your way. So we look at the poem again, and we see that he was anointed three times, right? Mm -hmm. So now, let's look at 2 Samuel. Come on. I'm sorry, we're, we're going we're gonna to get there. Man. So while, while David was um, in, in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. or Hebron, we'll say, David had <clears throat> six kids, six boys. Mm -hmm. Six boys from six different women. Mm -hmm. now, I need you to remember this first son, and this first mama, and this third son, and his mama. Okay? Uh -huh. right. The first one was Amnon. He was from Ahanam, Ahanam, you want to pronounce him. And the second one's Caleb from Abigail. All right. The third one was Absalom. He's from Ma. Mm -hmm. And the fourth one was Adonijah from Haggith, or Hagia. Mm -hmm. And the fifth one was Abahigo, Abahito, mm -hmm. from the son of name uh, Shephatiah. Mm -hmm. Shephatiah was his name. And then the sixth one was Ephraim from Angela. Right. Now this woman, the first one, who was this woman? Remember when David became king and how he was served with Saul? <laughs> Saul went crazy on this man. Amen. He was running from Saul as well. Yeah. But after he found out that Saul died, what does he do? He sends for his wife wow. to make her his wife. Mm -hmm. And they have this first son, Amnon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you said that bloodline is a little crazy there with Saul and that first son because that son now he had the space for his sister. Mm -hmm. For his sister, Tamar. He was so in love with this young lady that it made him sick. Mm -hmm. Literally sick. Mm -hmm. So he, he and along with his friend who was his first cousin Adonijah this thing is crazy y'all. <laughs> They concocted this story for him to sleep with this girl. 
by pretending that he was sick so that she could come and feed him. And then his plan was to rape her. Well, that happened. And when Absalom found out that this thing happened, he told her to go to my house. Go rest in my house. Mm -hmm. You stay there. Mm -hmm. All along, he's thinking about how he's going to take care of that half brother of his who did this embarrassing thing to his sister. Right. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> two years go by. Now he comes up with this plan to get Amnon away from everybody. Mm -hmm. It was sheep shearing time. Mm -hmm. So he invited him out. Got him, got his spirits high. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Spirits high. Ooh. Then he got him drunk. Mm -hmm. Told his men, when he gets to this point, I want you to kill him. Mm -hmm. yeah. That they did. Now, meanwhile, David had no idea any of this stuff was happening. Mm -hmm. David had no idea that she was raped. Mm -hmm. Didn't have no idea that he'd killed him. Mm -hmm. Right? So now <clears throat> we get to <laughs> chapter 15 of this thing where Absalom has this conspiracy. And what is the conspiracy now? He's trying to gather enough men mm -hmm. so he can go fight his daddy. Mm -hmm. He did this thing by going to the courthouse mm -hmm. and all the men that would come there, he would tell them that, hey, if I was the judge, your claim would be valid. Mm -hmm. And then he add a little something to it. After I made it valid, <laughs> I would give justice for it. Mm -hmm. The men love that. The men love that, speaking from Absalom. Mm -hmm. What he would do when he does that, he would take the hand, instead of shaking the hand, he would take the hand and kiss it. Mm -hmm. Kiss the hand, and then that won the hearts of the men. Mm -hmm. What does he do now? Now he's got enough men mm -hmm. to where he can go and fight this thing, right? All right. So <clears throat> now we get down to chapter 16. Mm -hmm. Chapter 16. David has a friend and a councilman by the name of Ahithophel. Mm -hmm. He had this idea after he sided with Absalom on how to defeat David. Mm -hmm. Now we back up a little bit to chapter 12 where Nathan came and rebuked David. Mm -hmm. Okay? <clears throat> mm -hmm. Nathan rebuked him because of that thing that David did mm -hmm. and that was he was supposed to go into war, mm. but he stayed home. Now he's walking the rooftop of his palace. And he sees this beautiful lady sitting over there taking a bath. Mm. Oh, how ironic. He just sees this lady sitting over there taking a bath, right? Mm. So he calls one of his men over and says, hey, man, who, who, who's that right there? Mm. Oh, that's, um, yeah, that's Bathsheba. That's Uriah's wife right there. Mm. Oh, really? So David sends for her. She comes back. They lay together. After laying together, the Bible says she purified herself. <coughs> made herself clean again. Then she went home. A few days later, they say weeks or months, she sends a message to David. Yo, man, look at um, this oven door. This thing been closed for a long time. But now there's a bun in there. Bun. Yeah, there's a baby in here. There's a baby in here. So what does he do? He sends for the husband. He sends for Uriah, who's out there fighting. Say, so look here, go get him, so we'll come back here. David's plan was to have Uriah go sleep with his wife so that that baby will be Uriah's and not his. Okay? After he gets back, ask him. He had the nerve to ask him, how is the war? How's the fight? How's the man? Everybody's good, you right? Say everybody's good. We're good. Why don't you go home and uh, relax? Go, go be with your wife. Your right response to that was the ark of the Lord is in the tent. It's covered in a tent. Mm. The men are there fighting. They're camped in a field. Mm -hmm. And you want me to come home and eat mm -hmm. and drink? Mm -hmm. Go be with my wife? Mm -hmm. He said, until this day, I will not do such a thing as long as you live. Mm -hmm. That's a man of loyalty right there. Loyalty. This thing gets even better, y'all. This thing gets even better. I'm telling you. Yes. Now, after this happened, David sends for him to, to, to come out again. 
by invitation mm -hmm. this side. Yeah. Yeah. When you get an invitation, you got no choice right, right, but to come, right? right, right. right. So now, he came, but remember the first time he went to the palace, mm -hmm. he never went into the palace. Mm -hmm. He slept at the doorway. Right. So now you can't say I went and slept with my wife because I never right. entered the palace. Right. Right. Right here. So the second time was the invitation for food and drink. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. He gets his food, gets his drink, got a little tipsy, you say, goes back right. to the palace. Mm -hmm. This time, he sleeps with the men on the mat, mm -hmm. never going to sleep with his wife. Uh -huh. right. David gets wins of this again. So this thing is bothering David now. Bother him. Right, right. This is the part that blew my mind. Yes. I had a lot of respect for David mm -hmm. up until this point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> David takes a note, mm -hmm. writes this sort of note to Joab, mm. giving him instruction on how to kill Uriah. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah. Here's a man again, a loyalty. Mm. This man took the note. Mm. He was the one that transferred a note mm. from David to Joab. Mm. And then in the note it said, put him on the stronger side of the opposing men. Mm. And when the battle starts, mm. have you men fall back. Mm. That way Uriah is left on the front line. Mm. When the fighting started, that's exactly what happened. Mm. And Uriah was killed. Mm. Yeah. Uriah was killed. Mm -hmm. Word came back to David, and it didn't seem like a big deal to him. Because mm -hmm. he knew his intent. Wow. Right. His intent was, he slept with this man, yeah. boy and baby, but God promised him that that baby would not live. Yeah. Right. right. And for the thing that you did to Uriah, yeah. I'm going to bring calamity upon your household all, right. all, all right. the days of your life. All, right. all, all right. the days of your life. Yeah. Jonathan, the word, tell him, hey, that thing that you did to Uriah, I will do it to you. I will have someone close to you sleep with your wives. Wow. And all of Israel will know. Remember that thing. Remember that one thing that you said. Now here's Absalom. Absalom, now he gets this idea now of fighting his dad. Back to Ahithophel, tells him, I need you. In order for us to get into his head, in order for us to win, I'm going to have two plans. One, you go sleep with his wives, his concubines. Mm -hmm. All right. Guess what? Absalom did that thing, just like Nathan told David that the Lord said in chapter 12. Right. That was going to happen. Yeah. Right. That thing to pass. Mm -hmm. Now, all of Israel knew this thing that happened. Mm -hmm. right? So now, we get to Ahithophel's plan. He wanted 12,000 men to go fight David. All right. Went to one of his buddies and said, look, Absalom and say, hey, Ahithophel come up with this idea for us to go fight Dad. Yeah. But he said, hey, look, man, let me tell you something. Don't you be no fool. All right. Your daddy is a fighter. All right. Your daddy's up there in age. All right. Your daddy know how to put some people down. Your daddy has slayed 22,000 men All right. at one time. And when he hears about this fight and this slaughter, the news will come back to David and slaughter Absalom men. Right. Kill them dead. So, after that plan failed, Ahithophel comes back, got his house in order, got his house in order, went out and hung himself. Mm -hmm. Meantime, Absalom is still in Hebron, or Jerusalem. Now he wants to go to Hebron with his dad. Uh -huh. He got his men, men followed him up there. And after they got up, they started a fight. Mm. Fight got so intense that they started going through the forest. Absalom went through the thickest part of the forest. Mm. Didn't know that this large oak tree branch was sitting there waiting on him. As he mm. got to this thing, he was caught up in it. Mm. Left there in midair hanging. Mm. Hanging in midair. All right. Messenger went back to Joab and told him what had happened. Mm. Joab said, man, and you uh, you left him there hanging? Right. You didn't kill him? Mm. Right. Mm. Give me a spear. Mm. Give me two just in case. Takes off, goes and finds Absalom, finish killing him. Mm. Now, we're gonna back up a little bit to Ahithophel. Mm. Why did he change a turn on David mm. after he was David's counselor? Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. Why? Why? Remember that young lady Bathsheba mm -hmm. that was bathing in that time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was his granddaughter. Oh. That was his granddaughter. Oh. So now he's feeling some kind of way towards David. Right, huh? right, right. So now, on top of that, Joab, who's the king and the commander of the David's army, mm -hmm. 
Absalom summoned him twice, but he refused to come. Mm -hmm. So what does Absalom do to make him come? Go and burn down his field mm -hmm. for Barney. So that'll get him here. Mm -hmm. Absalom came. Remember when he got stuck in that tree branch, that thing came back to him. All right, all right. Oh, Joab said, it's a time now. Uh -huh. Let me go get him right now. Uh -huh. So he goes and out kills him. Okay, now, we're going to fast forward now, y'all, because I know I'm boring y'all. Y'all don't like stories like I do. I like stories. I like stories. I like stories. Now, if we get to, to chapter 15. Right. Uh, chapter 19, I'm sorry. Now, David has been <clears throat> crying. The mourn. For the loss. Mm, but this is a lament. The loss of his two sons. All right. Amnon and Absalom. All right. Joab said, hey, look here, man. You didn't pick that face of yours up. Mm. These men out here, all of these men, they've been fighting for you. Yes, sir. All right, all right. You done humiliate them by your crying up here and your sobbing. You better right. get your butt down there and go address these men. All right, all right, all right. David mustered up the energy and goes down to that gateway. Mm. All the men get word of David being at the gateway. Mm -hmm. They come down. They want to hear what David had to say. All right. During this time, David didn't realize that God was getting ready to do something for him. Mm. All right, Looking you. for Joab, forcing him to go down there. Mm -hmm. He probably would have been sitting in his feelings over his two sons. Wow. Amen, amen. So now we get to the part of the, the song where we discovered the underlying situation that David is facing. Right. See, the things that he was facing. So now let's get into the components of the song. Mm -hmm. There's five parts to this song. And I, again, Pastor, I can't thank you enough for the teaching, man. You Amen. make me go and research some things. Amen. Just right, because you right. said it, that means that it's true. Amen. Go find out for yourself. Right. And because of that, I'm able to go and research some stuff. You know, research Amen. some stuff. Can't tell you how much I love you, Pastor. Amen. <laughs> so we get to the first part of this, first part of five parts, which is the invocation. You got your Bibles. Let's look at part one. It says, oh Lord, he immediately invokes the Lord. Right. What does that mean? He appeals to God. Right. He appeals to God. And if you look at the second part, the second part is a lament. Psalm 1, um, verse 1 through 2, it says, Lord, how many are they increased that trouble me? All right. Yes. Many are they that rise up against me. All right. Many of they would say of my soul, there is no help from God. Mm. This is where David defines the crisis right. that he's experiencing and tries to master it. Look at the third part. The third part is his confidence. This is part three, verse three through six, where it says, But thou, O Lord, art a shield around me, my glory and my lifter of my head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. I laid me down to sleep, and I awake, for the Lord sustains me. I will not fear the tens of thousands that's drawing up against me on every side. Now, if you look at that part, you will see that these are the reassuring statements yeah. regarding David's crisis. Yeah. These are the things that David is trying to get prepared for, that God is really preparing him for, yes, for his sir. enemies. Yes, now. now we look at the petition part of this thing. All right. Look at verse 7, where it says, where David actually asked the Lord for something. Mm. Mm. This, again, is the petition that God is going to remedy his crisis. Yes, it says, arise, O Lord, yes, Lord, save me. Oh my God, for thou hast smitten all my enemies upon the cheekbone, and thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Now take a look at the first scriptures, the first six. Okay. Look how long it took David to ask God for something. Look at that. Come on. Look at that thing. Woo! You know, sometimes when we get to a point or in our situations, we have the tendency to put our head down. Yeah. We want to give up. Yeah. We want to give up. But when we praise God, when we send praise to God first and yeah. foremost, yeah. we prepare ourselves yes, for what God is about to bring us out of. Yes, sir. All we got to do is hang on a little bit longer. Yes, you tell somebody, hang on. Hang on. Hang on, hang on. Hang on a little bit longer because God is getting ready to do something. Amen? Amen. 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 Ooh, I get fired up with this thing by myself, y'all. I'm getting fired up by myself. But let, 
<laughs> now we're going to break it down a little bit further. Now we got the five parts of the component of the song under the way. Now let's look at some keywords in this thing. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Let's look at the shield. Yes, sir. Look at that. The shield means a roundabout. The roundabout. What is he talking about? Protection. The protection of God. It's the protection of God. And what is it says that the enemy may try. Mm -hmm. It may come near you, yeah. but you're never able to penetrate right. through to get to you. But God has a shield around your situation yeah. and circumstances. Yeah. Now we look at the glory. What does the glory mean? Yes, Lord. Glory means the lifter of my head. God lifts my head. God lifts right. my head. Right. The lifter. Now I'm telling you, we know that Absalom. Thank you, Lord. Absalom didn't honor him. Yes, Lord. Why? Absalom was out to chase him. Absalom wanted to kill him. Amen. They knew that his men had given up on him. Amen. They didn't want nothing to do with him Amen. because you humiliated us uh -huh. in front of Israel, all of Israel. Amen. God said, don't you worry about that, son. Right, right. Don't worry about that. Right. I will honor you. Yes. I will bring glory upon you. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. Now we look at the lifter. And again, what the lifter means, the lifter means to restore. Restore. Lift his head up. Lifting his head up. We see that David was in despair. God was getting ready to take David back Amen. to where he started from. Amen. When he was first anointed in 1 Samuel 16, right around chapter 3, uh, verse right, 3. Right. When he was first anointed over his brother, his seven Amen. brothers. Amen. But David didn't know that. Mm. But he knew that he didn't. He couldn't give up. Mm -hmm. Or he shouldn't give up. Yes, sir. Why? Because God had a thing for him, a plan for him. Amen. So in your Amen. circumstances... Don't give up. I think it's trying to wear you down. Yes. It's going to wear you out. But don't give up. Yes. Don't give up. Don't give, don't give up. up. Yes. So now we look at the past. What does David say? He said, I cry out to the Lord. Yes, Lord. What does the cry mean? Mm -hmm. I cried or I called out to the Lord. All right, all right. That really means scream. All right. David well. was in such despair. Ooh. He couldn't handle it. Wow. He yeah. said, so I screamed out to the yeah. Lord. Right. I got his right. attention by yeah. screaming yeah. out to him. Yes, Lord. Lord I need you right about now. That's right. That's right, about that's now. right so man. when you're in your circumstances, when you're in that battle, yes. don't give up again. Right. Scream, cry out to God. God yes. likes us at our weakest point. Right. 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 Yeah. Now we look at the sleep part of it. Yes. Remember yes. when we got that they got that collect call from a dollar and made that collect call from a dollar. Yeah. <laughs> when the Philistine came and surrounded him twice, <laughs> twice they could beat up on him. Yes. Yeah. Beat up on him. Had to call his brothers and his family heard about this thing. Mm -hmm. So they go up there to take care of this thing mm -hmm. for David. The Lord put 3,000 men of Saul into a deep, deep sleep. Mm -hmm. David had a second chance to kill him. Mm -hmm. But what does he do? He tiptoes over them. Mm -hmm. Tiptoes mm -hmm. All right. over them. They can't hear nothing. They can't see nothing. They're all asleep. right, all right. Wow. Goes in, takes the spear, the jug of water, mm. goes out. When he gets to the other side, is when he called out to. Mm. Yes. That's when they woke up. Mm. Yes. That's when they woke up. So God can put your enemy in a deep sleep for you to get you through that thing. You know that thing that you're going through. He will put that enemy in a deep sleep for you and bring you out of that thing. Now we look at the teeth part of this thing. Mm. But I'm sorry, we'll go back to the to the to the tens of thousands. Yeah. I'm getting excited getting ahead of myself. The tens of thousands was David reminded of how many enemy that God has given him right. over the years, over the fight. So this ten or this thousand is a piece of cake. It's a walk in the park for God. God, you did it for me before. I'm believing that you'll do it for me again. Give them to me again. Give them to me again. So he reminded. That those enemies are no longer. I've got those enemies in yours. He says that you. when you hear the sound of my army, All right. you know that I'm coming through. Yeah. I'm getting ready to wipe them out. Yeah. And when I wipe them out, you don't have to worry about them anymore because I'm taking care of that thing for you. All right? And then now we get to the cheek where he's been slapped on the yeah. cheek. And what's that sign of? That's a sign of contempt. Right. That's a sign of contempt. What he's saying that. God now, he's protected me. Mm -hmm. He's sustained me. Yes, he right. He's propped me up now. Yes, he's Lord. positioned me now. Lift my head up now. Now I've got the courage to go out and yes, take care of this Lord. thing that's been troubling me and been bothering me for some time. Yes, and then we look at the, the teeth. 
where God now breaks the teeth of the ungodly of the wicked. Yeah. What does that mean? He's been capacitated them. He's yeah. made them to where they can't do nothing anymore. Yeah. That thing that you've been trying to do, it's no longer. It's no good anymore. He says that I've got the victory now. I will bring you out of this thing. And there was nothing now the enemy can do to you because now I despise the enemy. And when I despise the enemy, the enemy has no hold on you. Amen? Amen. Now, let's look at this thing. And we're going we're gonna to get ready to get out of here. I'm, I'm, I know I'm boring, y'all. But I love a story. I love a story. I love a story, you know? So now... I'm going to get ready to wrap this thing up now. All right. We're going to talk about some of the, the battles. All right. Amen. But before we go there, we'll go back to salvation. And what is salvation? Amen. Yes, It's the deliverance of God delivering you from that thing that's been bothering you, that that's sin right. that you've been dealing with. Because yeah. right. only God can do that. Only God that's can right. deliver. That's right. A woman yeah. can deliver. That's only right. God can deliver that's you. Right. Amen. 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 So <clears throat> we get blessings upon blessings Amen. from salvation Amen. from people or upon other people we get the blessing we get the glorify God for that thing that he deliver us Amen. from Amen. Amen. we get the glorify God for that thing that he saved us from Amen. Amen. so now <clears throat> we find strength how do we find strength in our battles Amen. Wow. let's look at divine intervention Amen. Yeah. divine intervention that's in, <clears throat> that thing that God intervenes in that's been troubling you at the most. Mm -hmm. Again, God can take care of that thing mm -hmm. without any issues. I mean, he can, he can do this thing. He can remove all of those things from you like that. Amen. Thank you, Lord. He can. But he doesn't. Mm. Right, good. Yes. Why? Why? Talk to us. Because God wants you to go through a thing. Right, good. Come on now. And going through that thing, yeah. God is going to strengthen you yeah, yeah, to come out of that yeah, battle. Yeah. Amen. So when you get empowered by God, know that you're getting ready to come out of a battle. So now we look at the second part of this, and how how do we get it, go through our battles and we get strength from our battles? Mm -hmm. We go through again this process, the strengthening. Because you look at the children from Israel, mm -hmm. that thing always makes me laugh. Mm -hmm. How close were they from their point? Mm -hmm. From here to there. Uh huh. But what does God do? God said, I know that y'all not ready to fight. Come on here. So I'm going to have to teach you something. Yeah. Instead of me taking you from here to there, all right, thank you, Lord. I'm going to take you all the way around there all right. so that you can prepare yourself and get some strength. And I'll bring you right back here. And once you've gotten your strength, I will take you from here to there. All right. God did that thing. God did that thing for them. And that's how we get strength in our battles. That's the way out. God allows us to go through a thing, go through a change. Yes, and we can get some divine encouragement. And divine encouragement, that means that God can send somebody your way. Oh, Amen. Thank you, Lord. Like a pastor. Amen. A wife. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Mom and dad. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Right. A friend. Amen. It can give you a song. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Lord. Come on now. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Song that they sung this morning. That's why I said this thing has changed me a little bit. Because he was intervening with me with a song and one of my favorite songs. Every praise, every praise. Doesn't matter what I'm going through, what I'm in. I'm going to praise him because I believe that he's going to bring me out of this thing right now. You know? When we get that encouragement, thank you, Lord. We have no choice now. Amen. <laughs> because we believe now more. Then or now that we did then because somebody else believes in us. All right, just as much. All right. Somebody else believes in you, it does, I don't know about you, but it does something for me. Yes, I, am. I don't get up there and speak in front of folks. Yeah, thank you, okay, Lord. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Thanks to Pastor Rigo. Yeah. Amen. Encouraged me over the years. Amen. Right? Seeing how he does this thing. Amen. You know, Pastor Rico, and we're far from that. But I've learned from him Amen. how to go in here and how to read this thing, not just right here, All right, Lord. but to go above that thing. Amen. Find Amen. out what he's talking about. Amen. That's encouragement. Amen. Or that wife who critiques you. Amen. Mm -hmm. so, uh -uh. That, um, that right there? Uh -uh. That ain't, no, you're doing too much of this. You do this a double time. You do this, this, and that. I don't mind it. Amen. Because she 
she's yeah, strengthening. Yeah, yeah, she's yeah, encouraging. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. You ready to do something? You ready to do something? Thank you, Lord. But I thank God for uh, thank God for encouragement. Yeah. 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 And that's what we need to do to each other. That's right. Get over right. the church, and what that does, it builds us up to be that's able right. to talk to that person outside the doorway, right? right. If yeah. we're yeah. encouraging here and inside the household, yeah. we can definitely go out there and do it yeah. to somebody else that we yeah. don't know. Amen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So now I'm close, and I'm going to close this thing down. Amen. You can go ahead and give me some music if you like. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You know, I've learned some things from David, some do's, and definitely some don'ts. Amen. <laughs> definitely some don'ts. Come on, come on. Hey, hey. Like I said, I, I, I was feeling some kind of way about David, and then it switched. All right. Yeah, yeah. Good. And then it switched back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because David had me just confused, and Saul had him confused. Right, right. We know Saul was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> good, 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 but David good. says, when you're in a battle, uh -huh. the first thing that you should do is give God the praise. Go out and praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Then he says, if that thing that's been troubling you, my goodness. Mm, don't be afraid to petition God. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's how God operates. Yes, sir. You can't just lay that thing down on God and expect God to respond. Yeah. Mm -hmm. First, you must come in with a humble heart. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then you petition God. Yes, right. Thank you, Lord. After you petition God, God will send that one, an angel, to go and answer that prayer that you requested. My Thank you, Lord. Make your request known to God. Yes, sir. Make it known to God. Right. Don't be afraid to scream out to God, to cry out to God. Tell God what you need. Yes. Tell God what you're battling. Yes, sir. Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of us are still holding on to that battle. Thank you, Lord. This is something we don't need to carry anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God is standing there. Saying, bring this thing to me. Give it to me. Let me have it. Yes. Let me deal with it. You sit over here. I've got your request. I will make it known. I will deal with it. I close here. I'm going to get out of the way. The circumstances that you're facing that's surrounding you be it the, the loss of a loved one mm. be it the job promotion that you didn't get that you deserve be it those at workplace who are coming at you because they don't want you to succeed either wow. and then again it could be the one close to you yeah. yes Lord the family they're in that circle. These are the fools that David was talking about. Mm. These are the enemies that David was talking about. Mm -hmm. There's a little difference between the foes and the enemies. Mm. Mm. The foe is that one that's in your circle. Wow. <laughs> Friend of foe. Friend of foe. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. What a teacher, man. That foe. These are the ones that are clapping for you. Yeah. They're clapping for you. They're clapping for you. But all along they have an agenda. Come on, that man. agenda, they don't want you to succeed. Yeah. And the least little slip. <laughs> and you fall. Yeah. They'll be right there. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Pounding you. Pounding you. Pounding you. <laughs> Stumping you. Stopping you, oh, stopping you, saying that they never wanted you to succeed anyhow. Right, all right. These are the folks, these are the ones you have to be careful with. Yes. The you. enemy will make yourself known. Amen. He will tell you, all I'm right. after you. Yes. I'm after you. All right. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get right. you. Yes. The enemy has nothing to hide. Yes. Oh, I shared this with the group some time ago mm. that I heard this from a co-worker. Mm. And that thing made me laugh so much, but then... After I stopped laughing, I realized how true it was. Mm -hmm. Y'all have heard it before, but some haven't. There was a father mosquito. Mm -hmm. 
and the baby mosquito. They were hovering at the window one night. The baby mosquito said, Dad, I want to go out into the world. I want to see what it's all about, Dad. I'm ready to go. Dad's like, no, son, you're not ready to go. Yeah, Dad, I'm ready to go, son. Junior, listen, you're not ready to go yet. I'm telling you, look, there's some cruel people out there in the world, Junior. Junior said, Dad, I think I'm ready to go. Mm. No, Junior, by this time, Dad says, no, Junior, Junior takes off and goes up. Mm -hmm. Junior was traveling all night long until the wee hours of the morning, 5.30, 6 o'clock. Dad is still sitting, hovering at the window, waiting for his son to come home. Mm. When he finally came in, Dad was relieved, said, thank you, Lord, for bringing my son back home. Amen. Junior comes flying in all excited. Dad! Dad, I was in the world, Dad. They loved me, Dad. Dad, they were clapping for me, Dad. They were clapping for me, Dad. Dad said, no, Junior. They weren't clapping because they liked you, Junior. They were trying to kill you, Junior. They were trying to kill you. So my point is, you're battling something. You're going through something. Know that your circumstances doesn't have the final say-so.